Hello and welcome. I have with me Mr. Sudhakar Arapa, founder and CEO of BIA Brands. A Harvard and IIM alumni, Sudhakar is a serial entrepreneur, running a diverse range of companies in sectors such as F&B, beauty and personal care, media and human resources across India, US and the Middle East. Today, we will talk about the new shopper. As shoppers, we Indians have always been value conscious. We now seek customization, we prioritize sustainability. While we shop online, above all, we want a very seamless digital experience. So in effect, we are talking about the future of e-commerce in India and who better than Mr. Sudhakar Arappa to dissect that for us. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Sudhakar. You, My first question to you uh, will be about Q-commerce, quick commerce. It has been in the air for a very long time. There's been a lot of conversation in this summit itself about it. Do you think that quick commerce will be the death of e-commerce? Well, you know, e-commerce uh, is, is, is thriving these days and uh, Q quick commerce, as you call it, Q-commerce is probably the new version of e-commerce there. If you look at uh, the fundamentals of business there, the fundamentals of business are going to, uh, are, are, will remain the same. It is just that the way we deliver things are, are going to change. Now, quick commerce, uh, is it going to be a sustainable uh, thing? I would say yes and a no. Yes, because it is another form of uh, commerce which will which will survive but i think what i really think is that uh, the definition of quick will change mm -hmm. now right now uh, the expectations of the consumer is that they are expecting everything to be delivered under 10 minutes and uh, if you say 20 minutes for a consumer he is going to say no i can't wait for 10 more minutes out there but the only thing is that if you want to deliver everything in 10 minutes under 10 minutes there there are certain categories like groceries uh, and certain products uh, where you can deliver in 10 minutes uh, time because you know India as a country is, is a very uh, 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 kind of a, uh, a huge country mm -hmm. where the density of the population is huge which, which actually makes it uh, which makes actually India one of the few countries where quick commerce actually worked. Right. Uh, but I think it's, it's going to be like the, the categories that you can do in quick commerce are, mm -hmm. are, are going to uh, be few and far in between. But majority of the categories, I think the definition of quick will change from 10 minutes to probably over 60 minutes or so, because not everything mm -hmm. uh, could, be, could be delivered in 10 minutes time. Is there a use case for quick commerce? Yes, there is a use case for quick commerce. But do you want everything uh, under 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. I would say no. Can uh, these companies uh, deliver it sustainably? The unit economics are going to work out? I really don't think so. But uh, I think things will change. So quick commerce will become not so quick commerce. <laughs> if it has to be sustainable, I would say yes. Right. Uh, we've seen the impact that social media, the rise of social media has had on uh, marketing of brands especially. We've seen its impact on the rise of private brands in India. What do you have to say about that? Well, uh, social media, the influence of social media is, is all persuasive across all the, all, all the sectors. And uh, businesses are not an exception there. So the kind of influence of marketing and uh, the, the, the influence of social media has risen phenomenally these days. Uh, these days, every celebrity is an influencer, every influencer is a celebrity. So I think as brands, if we have to survive, I think social media has, has uh, become a, a potent weapon. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the advantages of uh, private labels is such is that, you know, it is actually playing, it is actually providing a level playing field right. for smaller brands to actually compete with the the Unilevers and PNGs of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if, for example, if I have to launch a brand 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm launching, a, a, I own a cosmetics company, right? So if I have to launch a cosmetics brand, right? You need to own a plant. You need to formulate yourself. You need to have a manufacturing plant. Mm -hmm. You need to have a quality control department. You need to control R&D. You need to take it. Look, the whole mm -hmm. ecosystem there, it is huge capital cost, and mm -hmm. it is not uh, uh, you know, feasible for a small entrepreneur to launch a company there. Now today, uh, if you want to launch a, a, a beauty brand or a cosmetics brand, I, I hate it as a founder of a, a cosmetics company, but uh, you know, it's, all it takes is probably, you, know, you, can, you can go to an, a, a contract manufacturer there, make some sampling, uh, get some thousand pieces up, put it on, on online mm -hmm. on Amazon or Flipkart or Nika, whatever is that, right. and boom, you have a brand. Yes. Right. 
it's it's become so easy these days so what kind of disruptions do you see going forward as far as these uh, private labels are concerned because you have social media aiding them and as you just mentioned that uh, putting it all together is so much more easier every other person with the right capital can become an entrepreneur i think like like, like everything everything has its own advantages and disadvantages the, right. the advantage is that you could you could build a company with no capital if you have a great product Mm-hmm. you you could build a company with with, with almost next to nothing uh, mm-hmm. in terms of capital there which is an advantage the flip side is that yes the kind of competition that is is growing uh, uh, in the market yes. you go and check at any marketplace whether it's in amazon flipkart nike any other category uh, uh, there zepto or blinkit whatever the kind of brands that are prolif- pr- uh, proliferating in the in the market are humongous right yes so that is that is uh, aiding in in huge competition the differentiation mm-hmm. has become has become really difficult for us yeah. but that's the flip side the the positive side is that customers have a choice mm-hmm. they are spoiled for choice they have a great products yeah and at great prices there so yeah i think customers are making merry at this point in time having enjoying uh, great discounts right one conversation that we've been having uh, since yesterday is about local indian uh, companies or brands in our case going global what kind of uh, role are omni channels uh, playing in this well omni channel uh, i am a big believer in in, in physical retail mm-hmm. uh, in fact we at at at, at bia brands we are one of the few companies uh, yeah. apart from your unilevers and procter and gambles there we took a uh, we took a different approach to launching our brand we have a specialty coffee brand called uh, brew and bliss right so we've launched it uh, in physical retail first Mm-hmm. on day 1 we are there at 1200 modern trade stores which is which is a feat i don't think anyone have achieved uh, in in right. the uh, in the past few days the reason for that is that not because i don't believe in the power of uh, of of digital e-commerce there but the whole point is that if you look at uh, a category like in fnb where the margins are 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 less than 25 30% there mm-hmm. now if you have to give them a platform fee of 30% add to it the cost of shipping and and the cost of uh, uh, you know doing performance marketing there uh, i don't think any any fnb brand will be able to survive yeah and the platforms are like you know even if you are a 1000 crore brand mm-hmm. or a 100 crore if you are selling say 1000 crores on amazon or on flipkart there your platform fee is not going to change mm-hmm. so which makes it unsustainable and uh, not so viable there right on the other hand i have beauty products yes. where the gross margins are far higher there i am happy to be to sell it on amazon and flipkart so mm-hmm. it, i think it, it's important for an entrepreneur to to pick the right channels yeah to to kind of do it but uh, when you are launching a product it's easier for startups to go the d2c way because it's uh, perhaps cheaper to launch it digitally so what do you think is d2c the only way uh, to l- launch your fmcg startup well i wouldn't say d2c is the only way to do it but if your capital is scarce if right. you are not very confident about the, how the your product is going to uh do in the market there i would say a way to go d2c is the only way to go but if you are really if you have money st- uh, it's not for the faint hearted mm-hmm. it's going to cost you a lot of money but you can build a great brand physically also mm-hmm. so it it pretty much depends on 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 your objective do you want to uh, uh you know first try it out in the in the in the market and then go uh, go physical it's your choice but i would say d2c is not the only way to uh, to to launch your product I think if you have capital if you are content about the product I would suggest any brand to go physical first. Right. No brand has ever been built completely online. You <laughs> take the example of all the companies uh whether it is in in whatever sector you take edtech uh d2c whatever all the brands are now physical. Right they might have started d2c but they're all moving to a well, brick and mortar well, and d2c mix. Yeah d2c doesn't cost you a lot of money. Yes. So it's easier to go d2c but mm-hmm. if you want to build a truly scalable brand of uh, value i think uh, uh, physical retail and omni channel is the only way to go forward since you mentioned capital uh, we've seen over the years uh, despite global money movement india has remained a sweet spot as far as investments into startups are concerned what do you think is the impact of that on entrepreneurship in india as well as on the kind of innovation that we are seeing here well india is a growing economy mm-hmm. uh uh and uh i think it's better than china because china is a very controlled uh, market there so i think it's 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 easy for global money to chase markets with the scale as 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 india there so we've seen a huge influx of capital that is getting into uh, into india in the last in the last 10 years as such right but uh 
the, the problem what happened is that because of the global liquidity there, the, the, the kind of abundance of capital that is available in this country has become like, you know, more startups are dying because of indigestion than on, than on uh, you know, starving. Right. So what we've started doing <laughs> is that we've started, uh, earlier capital is an enabler. You want to do business, you need capital, so you raise funds, right? But okay. it's, it's the way. But unfortunately, what happened is that now we started using capital as a weapon. What yes. we are doing is that, look, I'm going to raise a fund, uh, which is $100 million. I'm going to pump in money, uh, uh, you know, by deep discounting, by driving out others. It's like a last man stand game, uh, last man stand, uh, a standing game, mm-hmm. right? Which unfortunately is driving good businesses out, out of business. So I think there has to be a sanity in, 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 in raising capital. Mm. We need to understand that and don't stuck in this global liquidity thing. Last year, as early as last year, yes. zero interest rates, liquidity is coming in. Everyone are looking at, uh, at India as a market there. Free capital availability, so people started raising hundreds and hundreds of million dollars. Mm-hmm. You need to look at it. Do does my business need hundreds of million dollars? Right. Not every business needs hundreds of millions of dollars. There. Right. And use it diligently. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's that's the message that I want to give it to entrepreneurs is that you know raising capital, please see it as an enabler, and do not. Uh, weaponize capital because yeah. ultimately it is going to hurt the ecosystem it is going to hurt the uh, the, the the other players it is going to uh, you know hurt the smaller players there to provide mm-hmm. a level playing field i think we need to use capital diligently and with with i think there is also a bit of responsibility that is involved in raising capital there i think we are getting there market teaches us a lot of things last year there is global liquidity everyone is raising funds mm-hmm. now today people are asking tough questions people are asking uh, uh, you know, a lot more, getting into a lot more details than what they were doing earlier now. Now suddenly you see a, a, a scarcity there. Absolutely. Great talking to you, Sudhakar. Great uh, conversations and wonderful phrases you've used. Weaponization of capital and how Q-commerce is, could be the death of e-commerce. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you and thank you for taking the time out. Thank you, Sujata.